Um, but okay, so we have three cocktails, well, four cocktails we're doing today. One is a special design for my good friend Emmanuel, who happens to dabble in mead making. Um, and so I got to play around for quite a bit and design this cocktail. And I think it's really, really great. And that one's going to be called Buzz Off. And I think we'll go ahead and start with that one. Um, just because it's all of the drinks today are designed to be very refreshing. Um, the kind that you can make and batch if you really wanted to, but also the kind that you can sit there and drink like eight of them all day and not feel bad about it because they're, they're really nice and balanced. They're not crazy alcohol forward, but they're still very tasty. So for the buzz off cocktail, you will need a shaker. And then your ingredients are going to be the fresh lemon juice. If you have it, bottled will do in quarantine situations. Um, orange juice, white grapefruit juice, but if all you have is ruby red, that'll also work. You're going to need your mead, and I'm using this one. It's called Camelot's Mead or Camelot Mead. Um, it's not super sweet. It's not super dry. It's just very middle of the road. Had some really nice floral notes to it. Um, and I noticed when I looked it up online that it's available in a lot of different cities across the U.S., but um, I definitely recommend trying this cocktail with all the different meads. And then if you have your lemon vodka or citron vodka or lemon infused vodka, we'll be using a tiny bit of that also in our cocktail. And then there was one of the specialty syrups that I made for this one. And it's a lemon infused honey and maple syrup, simple syrup. So seems like a lot of crazy ingredients, but honestly, everything that goes into this is really easy to source, except for maybe the mead. Um, if you cannot find mead, this would actually make a really nice base for a shandy. If you like light beers, I would say do it, top it off with one of those. If you like white wines, totally cool to do it with that too. Um, and it would also work really good with champagne. Like I'm gonna make one of these with me and then I have a whole bottle of champagne I'm gonna open for mojitos later. So I'll probably do one piece of champagne as well off the bar. But so for the cocktail, we're going to do a half ounce of lemon juice. I'm gonna put that in my shaker. And I'm gonna do a half ounce of orange juice as well. And then we have the white grapefruit juice. And white, grape ju white grapefruit juice tends to be a little more acidic than, and a little drier than ruby red or pink grapefruit juice. So again, I like to make cocktails that are very adjustable. Everybody has different palates or different you know, quarantine situations, but the general flavor will follow through regardless of what grapefruit juice you use. So I'm gonna use an ounce of this grapefruit juice. Put that in there. And then the honey maple lemon infused simple syrup, it's gonna be a three quarter ounce. Put that in there. And we're gonna do a half ounce of our lemon infused vodka. Now you could also use, if you don't have that, you could use a limoncello if you happen to have it on hand. I didn't particularly want to buy a lemon vodka because it's not something I consume a lot. So I have vodkas that I use for infusions and I just put lemon peel in vodka for about two days and just kept tasting it until it got to exactly where I wanted it. And then took the lemon peels out and stored it until using it right now. So that's a half ounce of your lemon infused vodka. And we're going to shake this. And then to this, once we shake it, we're going to add in four ounces of mead. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put ice in my shaker. We're going to go ahead and make that happen. And if you do have any questions while I'm, you know, actually doing things, then just wave at me on screen, unmute yourself and ask, or if you're on Facebook, I'm trying to pay attention to all of the commentary. So we're going to shake it for about 10 seconds. So if you're just like a home bartender without a ton of experience, um, it's a really good idea to at least shake 
until your shaker gets pretty frosty on the bottom. Um, that'll tell you that everything inside is pretty cold. I got this adorable bear shaped glass because it's a honey related cocktail and I'm a cheese ball. It's actually a honey jar. Um, but I'm going to fill this up with the awesome ice that I like to get from Sonic called Pebble Ice. Because it makes me happy. I'm going to put that in here. Put that right into my little bear. Okay. And I'm going to pour my four ounces of mead onto, well, into my cocktail shaker. Two. And then I'm just going to strain that directly over the ice in my glass. Now, if you obviously don't have a bear jar at home, that's not like something everybody has all the time, then I would recommend putting this in either a highball or a rocks glass would work as well. You want something that give or take, depending on what ice you're going to be using, will hold about nine ounces, give or take. So I have this little garnish I've prepared. Bring that over so you guys can see it. And a little like tidbit of more you can do to this cocktail is a feel fancier. Hello, Benson and Lee Lacey. I like to get really extra sometimes, um, but I like, I really like honey. There's a lot of different kinds of honey. The flavor of honey is based on what the bees eat. I really like floral scented honeys, but with really nice strong flavors. So if you wanted to add a nice little touch to this, and you happen to have orange blossom water, a little spritz of that on top of this cocktail is super nice. So I'm right over. You guys can see my cute little freaking bear. He's so cute, okay? So freaking adorable. And this is called the buzz off because you have one and then anybody that wants to mess up your day, you're just like, the nicer way of saying, go fuck yourself, just buzz off. Isn't it cute? Oh. <laughs> it it also, Lacey, it made me think of you because that's your name. Like a little bear? Yeah, if I do it this way, it's like he's got like bangs. My <laughs> right. little glass is a bear. But his bangs are all messed up in the middle because he gave himself a quarantine haircut. <laughs> we did. Yeah, that's the buzz off. Oh, God. Um, I hope y'all try it and enjoy it. You don't have to do this over pebble ice. It works over any ice. It also works really nice um, poured up into like a coupe. Um, but yeah, really nice. But again, if you do happen to have like that orange blossom water and a tiny little spritzer and you just add that on top, it hits you because the nose on it is citrusy, but sweet. And then the honey is going to be on the back note from the wine and then the infused syrup that we did. But if you do that orange blossom note, it'll bring up a lot of the floral tones of the honey. So yeah, there you go, the buzz off. <laughs> All right. Let's see. I don't think I have any comments yet on Facebook. This is a lot to juggle, guys, a lot. <laughs> Working on it. Okay. Next, we're gonna talk about the Mojito. I got super nerdy about this. I conferred with a lot of my colleagues on mojitos. They did a lot of research. I love mojitos. And I want to say before I even start to explain how to make a mojito, there is no wrong way to make a mojito. There are just better ways to make a mojito. Because if you tell someone how you make a mojito, I guarantee you, you will be able to find someone who's like, no, that's not right. So there's all these different schools of thought about whether you use actual limes and you muddle them into your drink, or if you just use the peel, or if you don't do either of those things, then you just use lime juice. Um, simple syrup versus sugar. 
uh, all kinds of stuff, whether you leave the mint in or you strain the whole cocktail over fresh ice. And there's all these really good reasons on why some things are better than others. So if you leave like your limes or your mint in the glass after muddling, the longer you sit with that drink, the more bitter it will become because those notes are going to be there. And oh, I didn't even realize I didn't spotlight myself. Let me work on that. Hi, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Chandler's getting her life together, guys, for the mojitos. Um, but so there's a lot of good things to take into account. Some people really like the traditional way, which has granulated sugar in it versus simple syrup because you kind of drink those through a straw. So there's almost like these little crunchy tidbits that come through as you're drinking that just make it more interesting. Um, some people don't like that, so they use simple syrup. Some people don't like to press the limes and muddle them into the glass because they feel it makes it too bitter because you also have the pith in between the flesh and the skin. Um, so they just use regular lime juice. Um, some people feel like mint, the bitterest part of the leaf is that centered uh, vein that it has. Some people take it out. Some people do whole sprigs. Some people just do leaves. So I'm just going to tell you the way I approach them. We're going to do like a classic one without any craziness. Um, and well, it's a version of a classic one. It's called a royal mojito. So traditionally, mojitos will have like club soda or sparkling water. A royal mojito has some champagne. So we're going to make that one first. And then I'm going to do what I call the chef's mojito, which is what I believe to be the best expression of a mojito in general. So for your royal mojito, I'm going to be using a fancy glass. You don't have to. Mojitos are usually done in a high ball, but that's also because they're muddled in the glass. So that allows you to have a constricted space where you're mashing all of your ingredients. And then that way you don't have the ability to overdo it and make it too bitter. So for the Royal Mojito, we're gonna use about 12 leaves of mint. Now, a general, in general, a sprig of mint will have anywhere from six to eight leaves. So it also kind of depends. Cause like sometimes you'll get some crazy mint that's just like huge leaves and then other ones that are super small. So we're just gonna go with like an approximate two sprigs, whether that's six or eight, we're just gonna put those directly into the glass. That's one sprig, guys. So I'm gonna do, I like this one for decorating. I'm gonna save that one. That one's really pretty. Muddle your uglier mint or your like overgrown leaves. We like to hide them from company. So they're gonna go on the bottom of the glass. So a Royal Mojito, because of the champagne, it likes to feel a little bit classier. It's going to tend to use simple syrup. So I have a standard simple syrup that I've made. It's a one-to-one -one ratio. And I'm going to use a quarter ounce of that. Pour it directly over the mint leaves in my glass. And then this one's not going to crush limes into it. It's going to have freshly squeezed lime juice. So this one's going to be a three quarter ounce of lime, again, directly over these little mint leaves. And it wouldn't be a mojito if we weren't using rum. Silver rum is the traditional rum. There are actually a few older traditional recipes that call for golden rum. Um, I personally like mine with aged rum because I just love that flavor. So it's entirely up to you. Some people don't even use like a white sugar simple syrup, they use a demerara. They'll use a sugar cane syrup. You can do a lot of different ones, but for the Royal Mojito, we're going to stick to a classic. So I'm going to use two ounces of white rum. Put that directly in my glass. And then I'm going to do some fancy stuff called muddling, which just means we're going to press it. It doesn't mean we're trying to grind it up. It just means we're basically trying to bruise the ingredients that are in there to get out all those oils. And I would recommend doing it between eight to 10 times. It just kind of depends on how narrow your glass is, how much flavor you're actually going for and what flavor profile you actually like. So I'm just gonna crush these leaves in here in the bottom. And if anybody was in the champagne class we did last week, you might remember we served a French 35 over ice. So I'm gonna add just a tiny bit of pebble ice to this because it helps the champagne stay nice and bubbly. Also, it chills everything really well because this isn't going to be shaken. So I'm going to add some pebble ice and some champagne. Ice. 
I'm really bad at popping bottles. I used to be better when I worked brunch all the time, but it's been a minute. As everyone remembers, if you were here last week, the struggle was really real opening champagne bottles. So let's see. Hopefully this one will be a lot easier. I need a towel, like a professional, so it doesn't go everywhere. This one's working. Then we're just going to cover that with champagne. It's called topping it off. And I really like mojitos that are juicy and tart. Some people prefer them sweeter. So I always like to put like a little wedge of lime on the actual glass as a garnish because it gives the person who's drinking it the option to add in a little bit. But this is classy. So it's going to be like a really tiny piece of lime because I guess. We live in a world where a lot of people think like smaller things need to be fancier. We're going to do subtle amounts of mint. Yesterday, a bartender on a happy hour I was in used what she called an irresponsible amount of mint. I thought that was hysterical. Um, but on this one, we're not going to be irresponsible. We're going to be really classy and refined. And we have a royal mojito. Thank you for the air claps, Miss Lacey. It's pretty fucking good. So if you've never had a mojito, because I actually asked a couple people lately if they've ever had one. There's a lot of people that have never had them. I have found a lot of people that have had them and say they don't like them, and they always give you a different reason. Some people don't like them because they were too sweet, some because it was too minty, some because it was too bitter, some because it was too sour. So we're going to address that with what I'm calling the chef's mojito on how to really have control over all of those different ingredients, okay? So this is the Royal Mojito. You could do the same recipe, top it off with just the club soda and it would be more of a traditional mojito. The champagne is what makes it Royal, I guess, or the fancy glass. Or if you have like a, I don't know, British accent, probably, that would also make it very nice and Royal. But we're gonna do the Chef's Mojito. And this one's gonna seem like it's really complicated when I tell you everything that's in it. But fear not, I'm gonna make it really nice and simple. So, let's see, all that back on ice. So for the chef's mojito, we are not muddling this in the glass. The reason I'm choosing to not muddle it in the glass is because I think that if the ingredients are left in the glass, so the mint and the lemon or the lime, sorry, it does, enhance those bitter tones the longer someone's drinking that drink. And mojitos tend to be that drink that people get and then they just kind of have conversations all day holding this mojito. They don't like chug them. So those ingredients have a lot of time to sit in there and macerate and really extract a lot more of their flavor profile. So in the interest of not allowing that to happen and controlling the flavor profile of my ingredients, I'm gonna end up muddling them in one of the smaller parts of my shaker to strain it over fresh ice so that all of those elements are no longer in there. So we have a couple ingredients that you're gonna have on hand, but that I might have modified. So if you are making this with me, but your ingredient isn't exactly the same, still please go ahead and use whatever it is you have on hand. So for this one, we're gonna be using actual white sugar. I am calling this like super fine white sugar. So what I did is I took regular caster sugar, and put a couple tablespoons in my coffee grinder. So now the texture is still granular, not powdered, but it's also not as granular as caster sugar. It's kind of in between. And I like that texture. I think it adds a little bit of a better mouthfeel to the drink. I like the fact that you get more little crunchies, but they're not as crunchy as you're drinking. That's a professional term, by the way. We call these sugar crunchies in the business. Um, if anybody else tells you different, they're liars. And then instead of crushing, actual limes or muddling actual lime wedges or just using lime juice. I have taken peels from the lime and then taken my knife and tried to remove as much pith as possible from the other side because pith tends to be a really, really strong bittering agent. So this will help me get like the nice essential oils from the skin without all the pitter from the bit bitter from the pith. Not pith from pith bith from the pitter. I don't know. Bitter from the pit. That's what we're trying to avoid. So I've got lime peels 
If you just have limes, don't want to fill your limes, just use lime wedges, totally okay. And then I'm going to also be using the fresh lime juice and the mint leaves. So in my cocktail shaker, and this is going to be a cocktail that I'm going to actually use teaspoons and a jigger to measure things out with. So in my cocktail shaker, I'm going to do one and a quarter teaspoons of sugar. And after I serve this drink, I'll come over and show you guys this sugar so you guys can see the texture of it. So it's one and a quarter teaspoons of sugar. So put that into here. And then I'm going to use a half of a lime's amount of just the peel. So when I was peeling with my vegetable peeler, I noticed I could go around my limes eight times. So a half of a lime would be four of these little strips in my kitchen mat. I'm not sure what tools you guys are using, but if you need help making conversions, please just let me know. So I'm gonna use four little strips, put those in there. And then I'm gonna use the limes, or sorry, the limes, the mint leaves. Obviously I haven't had enough to drink today. <laughs> so I'm gonna put the mint leaves and two sprigs in there. And now one of the things that I always tell people is to know the science behind things is really important. Things like acidic juices, such as citrus juices, things that are high proof, such as alcohol, those things will extract flavors very rapidly from different ingredients. So that's how you get an infusion, right? So like if you're used to making like teas or coffee at home, that's a hot infusion, infusion using water to extract the flavor of coffee and tea. But if you say put that tea in like alcohol, that extraction is gonna taste a lot different than just in water because alcohol pulls out more tannins, pulls out more bitter. So once you start putting your lime juice and your alcohol all in here, you wanna move fairly quickly just to preserve the actual flavor profile of the different ingredients that are in there. So if you're mixing along, we have 12 mint leaves in our shaker tin, and then we have a half of a lime's worth of peels, or a half of a lime if that's what you're working with, a teaspoon and a quarter of our sugar, and then I'm going to add my lime juice first, and I'm gonna do a half ounce and a bar spoon, which is like an eighth of an ounce. So just a little extra splash because I like mine a little bit juicy. So we're gonna do that. And then I'm gonna use whew, two ounces of the rum, or an ounce and a half, just depends on how you're feeling. Put that right in there. And then I'm gonna muddle. So I'm gonna just, same thing. You're, you're using pressure and you're kind of just rotating your muddler a little bit. If you don't have a muddler at home and you happen to have like a French rolling pin, the ones that are tapered on the end, those work beautifully. If not, there are lots of kitchen tools like wooden spoons that have fat handles. You could use those as well. But if the surface isn't as big, you might have to do a little bit of extra work. So I'm gonna press all of these ingredients into here. Once I feel like I have them muddled, I'm gonna go ahead and add my sparkling water. I prefer sparkling water to club soda. The minerality is different. To be fairly honest, most regular people don't really, can't really tell the difference once all the lime and the mint is in there. But at least for my palate, I prefer sparkling water to club soda. I'm gonna add in about an ounce and a half. Put that directly into my shaker tin. Then I'm gonna get my highball. And I made some fancy eyes because I like contrast in colors. And seeing as we're not gonna be leaving the mint and the limes in there, that'd be really cool to make like light green flavored cracked ice. Um, so I can tell you guys how I did that as well. I just ground up some lime or some mint leaves after blanching them in water for about 15 seconds. And then I strained them with a fine strainer. And then I placed them in a Tupperware container because I don't have ice cube molds. And then I just made ice. Very simple. So I'm going to strain this over. And I'm going to end up topping it off with a little bit more club soda towards the end. The rest of my beautiful green ice in there. 
pop it off with a little bit more fun soda or then of sparkling water in this case. And then I'm gonna garnish it. Like I said, I like mine juicy. Fat little lime wedge on there. And a really pretty amount of mint because it is a freaking mojito, guys. And that is the chef's mojito. I see you, Benson. I see you. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know who else is making these, but if you are making these, please tell me how they taste. Feel free to talk to me. It's totally fine. I made a mojito with what I had, and it's Ooh, what'd you use? Yes. If we could make mojitos, we would, Chandler. I know. What did you end up using, Noob? Uh, I use the uh, mint and uh, syrup that I have from Cocktail and Sons. Uh, just oh, nice. plain. yeah, it's really good. Um, fresh lime juice and white rum. I mean, nothing too complicated in that, but you still get all the flavors that you're supposed to get out of it. Awesome. So, I mean, in essence, a mojito is a minty, citrusy rum beverage. I've had to make a mojito before with mint jelly. Like people use that on lamb a lot. It's not something a lot of people have in their house. Um, but I couldn't find mint anywhere in the store. And I was like, I really have to make mojitos. So what could I use? So I just purchased mint jelly. You can get weird. But if anybody's telling you like how to make a traditional mojito, just remember Chandler told you there's no wrong way to make a mojito. There's just better ways. And I personally think mine is the best, but you know, I'm biased. So. <laughs> in my humble opinion. Of course. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. We've got one more for the day. And this one is probably my current new favorite cocktail of like all the things I've been playing around with at home. Um, and actually, there is some of new on our pandemic pin up happy hour today. Miss Katie Renshaw is joining us. And she reminded me like, after you've been in the industry a really long time, you know things, but you forget that you know things. And so she made a really cool variation on an Alabama slammer with some fluffy orange juice. And I was like, oh yeah, there is such a thing as fluffy orange juice and it's freaking delicious. So I've been kind of obsessed with that lately. So Miss Katie, thank you for reminding me that that exists. It has changed the game. For those of you who don't know what fluffy orange juice is, about to rock your worlds. So to make fluffy orange juice, my preferred method is to use a, a milk frother, like you would use to say like make uh, like foamed milk or cream for one of your coffees at home. So like this is what I'll be using today. It's just one of those little motorized frother things. Um, you can do it with an immersion blender. You can put your orange juice in an actual blender. You are not required to have fluffy OJ to make the following beverage. That is my disclaimer. It just tastes re really, really good with it, and it looks way cooler. But um, most of the time, fluffy OJ is juiced with a high-velocity industrial juicer, and then it is blended in a high-velocity industrial blender. Most of us don't have that at home, so that's not what we're doing. So if anybody else thinks that's how you make it, we're going to show them a different way. So for this drink, this is called the Cameche Rosse. I gave it an Italian name. Um, it is a riff on a cocktail called a Garibaldi. Garibaldi is a cocktail that has Campari, fluffy OJ, and it's like this really dope Italian mimosa. Um, I'm not a giant fan of Campari. I like it, but I love Aperol. And the main difference between both of those are both citrus category, bitter Italian uh, liquors or liqueurs. Campari is grapefruit. And then Aperol is made from Valencia oranges. And I just absolutely love the flavor profile of Aperol. Like I'm obsessed with it. So I took the Garibaldi, did a lot of research, and decided to come up with a tribute to the Garibaldi by modernizing it a little. So Garibaldi is named after... Giuseppe Garibaldi, who is a, or was, a military general for the Italian uh, military. And he was in charge of a lot of campaigns that took place across South America and Europe. 
And then there's this very interesting faction of soldiers that followed him called the Camiche Rose, which translates as red shirts. And the reason they were called red shirts is they were all volunteers. So the military would never pay for them to have uniforms. So a bunch of slaughterhouse employees donated these red shirts and that's what they wore. They volunteered, they wore hand-me-downs and they were with this dude just because they believed in him as a leader and in his mission that he was trying to accomplish for the Italian country. So for me, the whole Camiche Rosa is a very interesting part of that side of the world's history. And it just speaks volumes of people believing in people. And I've had trouble like believing in myself some days, specifically on like Mondays when I don't want to do anything because it's in the morning. And I have to remind myself, yeah, Chandler, you can get up, you can do things. So this drink tastes like you can accomplish it. That's the entire premise of this drink. You drink it and you feel like, yeah, I can go conquer whatever I got to do today. Plus, it's just really good. So it's a very simple, simple recipe. Um, if you're making this at home with me, this is going to be the one that has Aperol, your orange juice, and the tea infused syrup that I had everybody make. Um, there was an option. You could make it with chai tea or Thai tea. I made mean, mine with Thai tea because it's this really interesting orange color. It's really dark when it's all in the bottle, but it's really, really pretty. Um, and Thai tea has like hints of vanilla and cinnamon, whereas chai tea has a lot more of those darker spiced baking or bake, baking spice notes. I like it both ways. I'm just really into Thai tea as much as I am into this cocktail recently. So we're using Thai tea. So we are going to take about four ounces of orange juice. And I'm gonna just put them into the bottom part of one of my shakers and I'm gonna use it to blend or froth my OJ. If you're using a blender, you can put it in your blender now, or if you're gonna use an immersion blender, you can put it in whatever container that that fits into. I'm just gonna use my shaker. So I'm gonna do four ounces of OJ. And this is obviously way better if you have fresh orange juice. It's really, really nice and bright because all of that air that we're about to pump into it, it just makes it super, super bright in flavor with all that oxygen. I'm gonna blend it. And I've tested this out, blending it for different amounts of time. It's kind of hard to say how long you should blend it for. It depends on what tool you're using, but no less than about 10 seconds. I'm gonna see if y'all see this broth. But now, oh no. I don't know if y'all can see that, but it's like, I'm gonna pour this all over my computer watching. It's like super frothy. You see bubbles? There's bubbles right there. Yeah, super frothy, like on the top, it looks similar to a cappuccino foam. So if you don't have that, you ain't doing it right, keep blending. So that's what we're going for. Cappuccino foam looking OJ. So this is a build in your glass cocktail. And what I'm going to be putting in here is I'm going to do an ounce and a half of my Aperol. I'll put that directly into my glass. And then I'm going to use a half ounce of the specialty syrup that you have been making. If you don't have this, um, you can do it without the syrup, honestly. A Garibaldi is like sugar optional. But I just really like the flavor profile of what this does to the Aperol and the orange juice. Um, plus, if you have fresh OJ, it tends to be a little less sweet than like pre-bought OJ or pasteurized OJ. So it's very adjustable how much Aperol you want to add or how much sugar. And then we're going to take about half of our fluffy orange juice. So we're going to pour about two ounces directly into the cup. So now we have this really pretty like ruby golden type of color. I'm going to get some of that awesome pebble ice. And if, if you don't have pebble ice, then you want to put in maybe about two ice cubes. You're just going to put in a little bit. Then you're going to take your cocktail spoon, if you have one, or a chopstick if you don't, or a finger if you have a really long finger. And you're just going to kind of stir that around a little bit to make sure everything's nice and kosher. And then we're going to fill the rest of our glass with ice. If anybody knows anybody at Sonic, to see if they want to sponsor me and just give me ice all day. I'm taking suggestions. I'm going to put all my ice in there. 
And then I'm going to pour the rest of my OJ. And as you can see, there's all this beautiful foam right on top. And then I ran out of oranges, but I have blood oranges. I'm going to just put a snack right on top of my cocktail. I'm going to bring that to you guys. You see how delicious this looks. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, that's a real drink, guys. You know you want to get in here. That shit looks lit. Bro. Right? <laughs> Fire. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. what? Yeah, that looks good. I'll come over and make you guys some. Thank you. When life gets normal. <laughs> come teach us how to use our grill. That's so good. It's so good, dude. It's so good. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Some good shit. But yeah, so like I was saying, you can totally make this without the fluffy OJ. But like, why no? Right. Well, right. I know. Look at that foam. Like, who wouldn't want that on top of their cocktail? It looks delicious. <laughs> yeah, so this is my favorite out of all the ones we've made today. I just love this. Because like I said, I'm gonna drink this and then I'm gonna be like, you know what? Yeah, Chandler, you a boss. You can go get shit done. You can call your house, you can call your friends. Like, that's what this tastes like. This tastes like you can get your life together. Word. So does Word. anyone have any questions about any of the cocktails? My hotline is open. Noob says it looks like the sunrise from the Lion King. Yes, it does. <laughs> I love that. Great description. Yeah, see, I can just be like, Oh, Serena, or whatever that song is. Does anybody know the rest of that song? Not at all. Exactly. I didn't think so. <laughs> Maybe if I finish the cocktail, I'll be able to sing the song. That's how that works. Word, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah It'll come out eventually. Someday, someday. Maybe, maybe I'll learn that. But, uh, but yeah, so um, before I end the live stream, just knowledge that I'm going to put out there to the general interweb. Next week, we're doing a themed cocktail class, um, credit or not courtesy of, but per request of Miss Beth. We're doing Tiger King themed cocktails, guys. <laughs> It'll be really interesting. Uh, so if you come and you join in on the Zoom, please wear any type of related gear, whether you want to wear like a pink button down, because I don't know, maybe married two men. Or maybe you want to wear some like leopard print. I know Miss Beth has like cheetah print gloves. But yeah, come dress for the occasion. The cocktails we will be making will be um, Quarantine and Tiger King, R.I.P. Don Lewis, and here, Kitty Kitty. <laughs> so those will be really fun. Um, the cocktails themselves are really good. They're not just gimmicky, but Miss Beth is going to be throwing a Halloween party at some point this year and wanted to have a Tiger King theme, so she asked for cocktails. So we'll be doing that, and then next Sunday, after the cocktail class, we'll be taking a short break so I can set up my kitchen, and we'll be doing a cooking class as well. I'm not sure what I'm going to call that yet, so we'll let you know. Um, but yeah, if you're on Facebook, sucks to suck, but I'm going to turn off the live. Thank you for joining us. Um, if you guys have suggestions or have anything you want me to work with, please feel free to message me. And if I didn't get this on Facebook, I guess you can't message me, but please feel free to let me know. <laughs> I'm going to end the live stream and then just hang out with the cool people that are here.